Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Andy, welcome. Thank you so much for landing on this video. If you're back as a subscriber, thank you so much for the love. Today, let's talk about the books I read in the month of March. So March was a tiny reading month for me. I've mentioned this already on my channel, but if you didn't know, in March I launched officially my Etsy shop, which was very exciting but also very demanding and I couldn't read as much. But I still ended up reading four books, which I'm happy about. You know, I always aim to read at least one book a week. And the majority of these books were really good, so I figured I had to talk about them in one video at least. Without further ado, let's jump into this tiny, tiny wrap up. So the first book I read in the month of March is, as always, our monthly pick over at the Bookworm Lounge. If you are not part of our book club, I will leave the Discord link down below. We read one book a month together. And the book that had the most votes for March is Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I am so happy I read this book because this one is really, really out of my comfort zone. If you don't know anything about this book, I would suggest you leave it like that because this is the type of book that you really want to go into blind. But if you want a bit of the synopsis, it follows our main character Piranesi and Piranesi lives in a house and in that house there are infinite halls and for example in the top halls there are clouds and in the bottom halls there is the sea. So when you're starting out with this book you don't really know what the house represents um, but all you know is that in the house there are statues and all of the statues are things that do not exist in that house and our main character Piranesi along with another person are in that house kind of trying to study you know the occurrings of that very own world. I will leave it at that because that's pretty much all the synopsis it gives away but honestly guys this book really really took me by surprise. I will admit that the first quarter of this book is pretty confusing and in my opinion was not that engaging. I was very anxious at the beginning. I really thought I wouldn't like this but I would really say like if you pick up this book don't worry it's all gonna make sense at some point and there's a big reward for just like sitting through that first quarter. I ended up giving this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. This was an amazing amazing read. This book obviously has great messages but also I'm not someone who usually like really like whimsical and very like poetic writing style but this one was just fine you know like it is somehow like metaphorical and flowery but not too much the characters from this book are very very engaging our main character Piranesi there's no way you're not gonna fall in love with him he's just so pure and so kind and you really feel for him through the whole book if this is out of your comfort zone Please, like, go ahead, don't be shy, it's really good. The second book I read this month is The Project by Courtney Summers. This really did not end up working out for me. I was kind of excited to pick up this book, to be honest. I talked about this book in one of my videos where I talked about 2021 releases that I was really excited for. And maybe my tastes are changing, but I did not like this one. So if you didn't know anything about this book, it's a YA thriller. And it follows our main character, Lo, who has lost her parents. And she's kind of lost her sister too, because her sister uh, a couple years ago joined this project. It's called the Unity Project. And it's a group of people that are very religious um, and that are together to kind of form what you would consider a cult. But our main character, Lo, really feels like there's something wrong with that group. And also she works for a magazine and at some point a man comes to the magazine and says that the project killed his son because his son committed suicide, apparently for the project. Uh, so she's going to go to this project, she's going to meet with the leader of that cult and try to understand like what's happening and if it's true or not that this cult is totally shady, you know? I don't want to be biased in my review, I'm trying to be objective, but I do feel like maybe my tastes are changing a little bit and YA thrillers maybe are just not for me anymore, but I found this to be very, very boring. I didn't find it was thrilling at all. I could really expect pretty much anything that happened. And once again, I'm trying to be objective. Maybe it's just not my cup of tea anymore, but this is not a book I would recommend. I gave this book two out of five stars. Okay, next we have a book that has made it to my favorite books of all time. And that is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. Now I feel like talking about this book in such a good way is kind of getting repetitive because every single person on the face of the earth has loved this book. And I have yet to hear one person say anything negative about this book. So for that 
reason, I will admit that I had extremely high expectations for this book and the book met all of them. At first I was like, okay, why is everyone freaking talking about this book? Like what could be so incredible about this book that is going to like blow my mind, you know? I figured out what it is and it's just amazing. So in case you have been living under a rock for a couple of months, uh, this book is an adult fantasy, but it honestly really reads like a middle grade. It follows our main character Linus Baker. He is a caseworker for the Department of Magical Youth. So think of a character that's very, you know, like solitary, does his little job, has his little cat, takes care of his plants, does not bother anyone, you know, he just goes, does his job and goes home at the end of the day. And and he basically supervises orphanages for magical children, just making sure that, you know, everything's fine, the children in these orphanages are cared for, and as he mentions at the beginning of the book, like, his job is not to figure out, you know, why these children never get adopted, or what even becomes of them when they become adults. His job is just to make sure that the orphanages or the masters of the orphanages are treating these kids right. And at the beginning of the book, he is told that he has to go to this specific orphanage where six magical children live. And he is told that these children are very, very dangerous. They could potentially end the world. And he's also told that the master of this orphanage is a bit weird and you have to figure out what's wrong with him, basically. So he goes to the orphanage, meets the six kids. I will not tell you what their magic is because you have to read it to really get immersed in it. It's not even a spoiler, but like, I don't know. I, I just want you to read it, so I'm not gonna say. But these characters in their own like difference are so original and they're so unique and they are lovely. And the whole point of this book is that, you know, our main character who's very retracted from society will go there and really find a true place of belonging through that relationship that he will form with these kids and with the master of the orphanage. This is one of the best stories I have read in a while. This is some of the best characters I have read in a while. And this book truly hit home because it's a story about inclusion, about diversity, about love for one another. And there is no way you will not fall in love with these characters. They are amazing children, and even though they're different and they know that people know that they're different, um, they have dreams, they have goals in life. Some of them are very simple dreams, yet they live their life to the fullest. I find that this book is truly a good social commentary on how, as a society, we've come to only want to associate with people that look like us, uh, people that think, that talk, that speak like us, and how that could be really detrimental for people that are different and how it could lead to children or even adults being completely isolated from society just because they are different. This book will, I swear to God, make you think, make you reflect, maybe make you even reflect on your own choices and how you see uh, the world or certain people around you. It's amazing. Also, I would strongly, strongly suggest to pick up the audiobook for this. Whether you want to, you know, read it audio and, and physical at the same time, the narrator for this book is absolutely incredible. He took so many voices to narrate some of the characters. His voice was just amazing. It really truly added to my experience of reading this book. Needless to say that I gave this book five out of five stars. I would probably give it six if it was possible. I urge you to pick up this book if you haven't already. It's just that amazing. And then the last book I read in the month of March is Voice of War by Zach Argyle. If you don't know this book, it is a self-published author. This is his first book. It was actually a finalist at the SPFBO competition, which is a fantasy competition for newly self-published authors. My friend over at Bookborn did a super interesting video recently about SPFBO and what it is and why you should pick up books by self-published authors. I will leave a link down below. It's awesome. This book was so good. Honestly, this book really exceeded my expectations and I'm not gonna lie, I don't read a lot of indie authors. I know I'm biased. I know I'm maybe wrong for that. I tend to gravitate towards books that have a really like strong track record because I don't want to be disappointed. This book really made me understand how important it is to read new authors because there are some truly hidden gems within the self-published community. So this is an adult fantasy and honestly the synopsis in the back doesn't really tell you much except that we follow three 
three main characters in a world where the magic is called thread weaving. So if you are someone who read the Mistborn series or even Lightbringer, you will see that this magic system is definitely inspired by it, but it's also very original. It has its own attributes, but basically people that have this power of thread weaving can create threads that basically connect with objects and they could push and pull on these objects. Once again, kind of similar to Mistborn, but I'm telling you, it's very different at the same time. The main reason why this book impressed me so much is because the world building was so dense within like such a small amount of pages. Like this has 365 pages. It's pretty rare that you see a short book within the adult fantasy realm. And as someone who likes shorter books, straight to the point writing style, you know, very straightforward, I could really, really enjoy that. I'm not someone who likes to sit through like overly descriptive narratives. Also, if you pick up the physical book, there is a pretty cool map at the beginning. So that really helped with understanding where our three or four main uh, civilizations were. Now, one, if not the strongest attribute of this book, is the way women are portrayed in this book. Oh my gosh, that was so freaking refreshing. So if you're a woman who reads a lot of adult fantasy, you might know that many times, too often, women are objectified and sexualized in adult fantasy books. And we have a truly feminist author right here. It's obvious, okay? Within the very first pages of this book, you will realize that we have female high generals, we have female guards, we have a main character that really cares for his pregnant wife, we have women running civilization. And I'll tell you what, this was accomplished flawlessly in a very genuine way. In no way I felt like this author was trying to do like performative action to try to like sound like a feminist author. This is a feminist author, you could truly, truly tell. I did have one small complaint about the book and honestly, it's not a deal breaker at all. I wrote all of this in my Goodreads review. If you wanna check it out, um, go follow my Goodreads, read by Andy. But honestly guys, never once did I feel like I was reading a book from a new author. I gave this book four out of five stars. Alrighty guys, so that is it for for my small wrap up. Thank you so much for watching. I'm still overall super happy with my reading month for the month of March because three out of four were just that amazing. But yeah, I do miss reading and I plan on reading a lot more in April, hopefully, uh, because my shop is set up now. If you have liked this video, as always, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to my channel already and you like this kind of content, don't hesitate to click that subscribe button. It's just really helpful to help me grow my channel and hence bring more of these videos out for you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.